Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at report writing. Now this video has specifically been designed for anyone studying any aspects of the Functional Skills English qualification. Specifically we're going to focus on report writing because it's often one that teachers neglect to think about, but it's really a very important one to think about in your exam. We're also going to take a look at how to actually prepare for an exam and the kind of key things and key skills that you need to focus on. This was something that was actually brought up by one of our current subscribers, so it's fantastic that you've given us some comments and some ideas for future videos as well, so please keep them coming and we'll try to update our videos as we go. First things first then, approaching the assessment. What kind of techniques do I need to work on? How can I actually make sure that I approach the assessment in the best way possible? So first thing we're going to think about is these few steps just to make sure that our exam technique is on point. So the first thing you can focus on is making sure that you're managing your time effectively. When you're doing the reading question, obviously you do get quite a lot of time, but it's important that you are aware of how many marks are available for each question. And if it's only worth one or two marks, that you're not spending too much time going back over it, trying to find the correct quote or part of the text that they're referring to. If you're spending more than a few minutes at this kind of question, that means it's something you definitely need to go back and rework and revisit because really your time management isn't being effective. The same goes when you're looking at some of the questions that are worth more marks on the reading paper. So you might get some that are worth five marks, for example, which might mean that you need to spend five to ten minutes on that question. Be aware of the word count. Now specifically this comes in with anyone who is doing the writing exam. So normally for uh, the questions you'll either get um, a question saying to do 200 to 250 words. Roughly it's about that kind of length. Now when I say be aware of the word count I don't mean go back through and count every single word. But you should have an awareness. How much does 200 words look like? How much does 250 words look like? You don't want to waste your time and actually go through and count every single word every time you do a paragraph because that's going to be really time consuming and it's really not going to be very effective in the exam so just practice writing um, a normal response if you're doing this for practice then go back and review it and count the words but you shouldn't really be trying to do that during the actual exam or the assessment number three plan your writing assessment so one of the annoying things about the plan is that people don't really plan effectively. So a way that you can make sure you're planning effectively is think, what do I need to include in order to get a decent mark? So the main things I'd be thinking about is what kind of techniques can you use to persuade the reader towards your point of view. So if I was planning my response for the reading assessment, I would probably have De Forest written down the side of my page. And then I'd use that as I go on with my writing and just tick them off to make sure I'm including each technique in my writing. Now you don't need to include all of them, but that's just a good way to make sure that I'm including a few of them in there as well. I might also think about a few of the intelligent word choices that I could choose. Remember you do get marked on actually using sophisticated or ambitious vocabulary and also being able to spell them correctly as well. So it might be worthwhile that you write down one or two keywords that you'd like to include in your writing as well. Number three. Be aware of what the examiner is looking for. Now, I know what you're thinking, that this can be quite difficult because you don't really know what they're after, but you are actually given a detailed understanding of what will get you some marks in the exam. When you look at your writing assessment, it will give you certain bullet points to focus on. So make sure that those are things that you're including in your plan and make sure that you speak about these when you do your actual assessment. Number five, familiarize yourself with both paper and online assessments. This is because that using computers sometimes leads to errors, but if we're in the kind of situation where it's getting to the end of the academic year and you maybe haven't sat the exam as many times as you would have liked to and you don't really want to carry it on for next year because that's wasting your time, maybe you've got aims and you want to go for a certain job or you want to go for um, um, an access to higher education or something like that kind of qualification, then we need to make sure that you're getting the assessments in as soon as possible. Now, paper-based assessments are harder to arrange for your teacher than online assessments. The only issue with this is that if you're not someone who's used a computer regularly, if you're not used to typing quickly, then that can also mean that you could potentially fail the exam if you haven't had enough practice. Now, your teacher should be able to provide you with both mock papers um, for the paper one, but also there are programs they can use for the online assessment as well. 
So using the computer sometimes leads to a few errors. So it's really important that you get a little bit of practice during your lessons or at home, just getting used to the normal way of working with a computer. And finally, above all, practice. We will have a video uploaded onto this YouTube channel every single week. There's always going to be support and guidance. You can leave us a comment if there's something you're specifically struggling with, and I will try to get back to you or create a video to help you with that as well. Practice is so important. The more you do it, the easier it's going to become. And that counts for any kind of level, whether it's level one, level two, GCSE, or even ESOL. The more you do it, the more you're going to get out of it in the end. Now we're going to think about actually applying our understanding. We're going to think about doing a typical kind of reading assessment. So this uh, version that you're going to see is just what we call an abridged version of the assessment. It's a smaller and more condensed version. So if you actually want the full extent of it, then you can follow the description below. There will be a link as well to the rest of the assessment that you can print off and go through at your own time if you want. What we're going to look at today then is just a small version of this. So what I'd like you to do is read through the information carefully and try to absorb as much as you can. Now, this is a really good thing to practice as well, because it sees how well you can actually absorb the information, skim and scan for key information and pick up on the kind of techniques that are being used as well. So it says then, shopping is the best cure for the weekday blues. Ever had one of those days where things just get a bit too much? Ever needed a boost to just get you through the week? There is nothing that helps me more than going to the Trafford Centre and losing myself for an hour or two in retail therapy. Shopping centres are a place for relaxation and enjoyment. Where else can you find so many wonderful items just calling you from the shelves? It makes me feel free and fantastic to see everything in front of me and being able to select clothes that make me feel like me. Do you know what I mean? There is something about actually being there, soaking in the atmosphere and taking a bit of time for yourself. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy online shopping too, but it just isn't the same, is it? If you'd like to pause this now and you'd like to go through this in your own time, then please feel free to do so. What I'd like you to think about here is what form of writing are we actually being presented? Now, this is quite difficult because we don't get to see the full extent of the document. Again, you can download that after if you want to, and it will be in the description. But hopefully from the tone, we can understand that this is actually a blog. So a blog, as we've looked at in our previous videos as well, is somewhere where someone has gone online and they've expressed their own personal opinion or account about a topic. And you can see here from the language that's used, it is very personal. They're sharing their own kind of uh, personal stories about their shopping experience. And they're trying to kind of convince you towards their way of thinking as well. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use this information to just have a go at five quick questions just to test your understanding of the text. If you do need to keep going backwards and forwards, that's fine, but see how much information you can absorb just from reading it in that first instance there. Reading questions. Attempt the questions below. So now we're going to look at five questions based on the extracts that I've just read out. The so first question then says, look at the line, shopping is the best cure for the weekday blues. What word class is the word best? Now, if you're not too sure what we mean when we say word class, Word class are things like verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, all of those other kind of things that you need to talk about there. Now, I haven't actually identified the word class that is used there in the word best, but hopefully it's one that you already know. If you're not too sure, we do go into this in more detail in other videos as well. OK, moving on then. So looking at the second question now. Identify the name of the shopping centre mentioned in the blog. Number three, identify where the writer has used alliteration to express how shopping makes him feel. So again, alliteration is a very important uh, DeForest technique. It's where we're repeating the same letter two or more times, and this is often used to emphasize a certain emotion or feeling conveyed by the writer. Number four, what is meant by the term retail therapy? This is a really good question to have, and especially if you're an ESOL learner, this is the kind of phrase that you might face in the actual reading assessment. And it's a very kind of typical English expression as well. So the more you get used to these kind of things, the easier it's going to be in the exam. Final question then. Look at the quotation, losing myself for an hour or two. What language technique has been used here? Now, the language technique that's been used 
isn't actually one of our deforest techniques. It's actually one of the ones that I would consider a more advanced form of persuasive language. OK, so we have looked through this in previous videos as well. And again, if you're not too sure, when we go through the answers, it's a good idea to kind of revisit this maybe in a week or two and see if you can improve on your understanding. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to start going through the answers. Class feedback. Check your answers against the ones below. So if we look at the answer to question one, then it says the writer has used a superlative adjective in the line. Shopping is the best cure for the weekday blues. You'll notice as well that I'm, when I'm writing my response, I'm writing it in full sentences. Now, you won't need to do this for the actual reading assessment, especially when you get a question that's only worth one or two marks. But it's just a good habit that I get into. If this question is worth more marks, so five marks, for example, then you will be expected to write in full sentences. If you're not sure what we mean when we say a superlative adjective, it's a good idea to go back and have a look at some of our other videos. We have actually done a video just on superlatives as well, which is really, really beneficial. Uh, so you should definitely give that a look. Um, a superlative is the highest or lowest extent of something. So you can see there the superlative that has been used is the word best. That means that there's really nothing better um, for the weekday blues, which means, you know, when you're sad and depressed than going shopping. So a superlative is the highest or lowest extent of something. And this can be any word that is the largest, the smallest, um, the highest, the lowest, anything really like that that dictates one extreme or the other. Um, you'll notice as well with the word best, you can't get better than the best. So therefore, it's the highest extent that we can go in terms of our description. It's an adjective because an adjective actually describes a noun. And the noun that's being described here is the word shopping. Number two, then moving on. So the Trafford Centre is the shopping centre that was mentioned in the blog. Number three. The writer has used alliteration in the line. It makes me feel free and fantastic. Now, this is actually an interesting line to pick out on. Alliteration is where you repeat the same letter more than once. And you can see there we actually have three examples of F. So feel free and the word fantastic. So even though it's separated by the word and, it still counts as alliteration. And this would also count if you just had feel free as well. So it doesn't have to be three words that have the same letter, but it just kind of works well as an example there as well. So number four, moving on. Retail therapy means when you shop to make yourself feel happy or cheer yourself up. And number five, last one. In the quotation, losing myself for an hour or two, the writer has used a metaphor to describe the feeling he experiences while going shopping. So again, a metaphor is not one of our deforest techniques. It's actually what you might consider a more advanced form of language. Um, a metaphor is anywhere where we use figurative language to express how you feel or what you are trying to describe. So he isn't literally losing himself. What he means is that he's so absorbed in the activity that all the other worries, all the other stresses that he might be having in his life have kind of melted into the background. He's not really focusing on that. So when he says losing himself, he means he's kind of caught up with it, captivated by what he's trying to do. Higher level questions. Some of the questions are worth more marks than others. So if you think about the questions that we just went through, a lot of them are only worth one or two marks. However, when you get further on in the exam paper, some of them might be worth something like five marks. So now if we have a look at this kind of question, let's go through it together. So your friend is thinking about going to a shopping centre for the first time. Using details from source A, advise them on their first shopping trip. In your answer, you should express your point of view clearly. Use the source to support your answer and write your response in four sentences. Now, when you are faced with a question like this, it's really important that you think carefully about the kind of things they're asking you to focus on. So obviously, the topic is still going to be based on the extract that we just read, which was based around a shopping center. When it says here that you need to use details from source A, we mean that you need to use quotations either directly or indirectly to support your point. These bullet points here are a real clear way to make sure that you're sticking with the focus of the question. So express your point of view clearly. So give them some actual advice on what they're thinking about doing, about actually going to the shopping centre for the first time. Use the source to support your answer. So in that case, we're going to use some quotes. So some interesting things that the source actually tells us about shopping centres. 
and we're going to make sure that it's in full sentences. Again, this is a really good habit to get into, even if you're just doing it as revision or as a bit of practice, you should always try to be writing your response in full sentences. Now, if you're struggling to start or if you'd like to actually see an example of this, the video is now going to move on and we're going to look at an example response for this answer. Student example. Use the example below to help improve your understanding. So here we have then the student example. So it says then, Hi Sam, I hear you're thinking about going to the Trafford Centre for the first time. Many people have said some good things about going shopping. In text A, it says, Shopping centres are a place for relaxation and enjoyment. I think this would be a really good thing to help you relax and enjoy yourself. Shopping online can be much quicker. However, shopping in person is a great way to get you through the week. So this example actually goes a little bit further than was necessary. So if we think back to the actual bullet points, the main thing that you need to focus on, we need to make sure that it's written very clearly, that it's been written in sentences, which it has, and also that it's actually used quotations from this extract and we can see it's actually done that in two different ways and you can see it there first of all where it says shopping centers are a place for relaxation and enjoyment so that's one clear quotation that's come from the extracts and then again at the bottom as well where it says it's a great way to get you through the week now if we break this down a bit more you can see there that the first line or the first sentence of the response, it meets the purpose of the question. The next thing we're going to identify is this. So it's using an appropriate quotation from the text. And finally, we've got a clear and straightforward explanation. Now, typically in the exams, you won't just be working from one source. If you're doing level one or level two functional skills, it's likely that you're going to be given um, three different sources of information so text A, text B and text C so this might be slightly different when you come to do it in the exam but this is just a kind of example just to get you thinking about how you might structure or approach this kind of response. Look at the exam question and identify the key areas of the assessment. So this is one we're going to actually focus on in terms of producing our own form of a report. So the question also comes with a bit of a scenario as well. So task one, you've been asked to write a report for the council about a shopping area near you. The council wants to know about the positives and negatives of the shopping area. Positives could include the range of shops and good transport links and negatives could include the number of shoppers uh, declining and shops closing down. Your report should include sections on. So again, we're about to see some bullet points. This is going to be some very clear things to help actually focus and zoom in on in your response. So you should talk about the shopping area, its positives and negatives, and the changes you would recommend. OK, so those are the three kind of things that you want to start thinking about in order to produce your response. Next thing then. So this is the actual writing task. So we had the scenario, that's the part that says task one. And now we're going to actually see the proper writing task, the real question behind the scenario. Write a report for the council about the shopping area. In your report, you should describe the shopping area, outline its positives and negatives, and explain the changes you would recommend. And you should aim to write about 250 to 300 words. So this is actually more like a level two kind of question. And you can tell that because the word count is actually a little bit higher than we'd normally get for level one. You'd also get 21 marks for this question. And you'll notice here that it's actually very clear about the things that you need to focus on. It's actually repeated some of the details when it says task one and it gives you the scenario. And again, when it does the writing task. So this is a real life um, assessment that has been used by the exam board as well. So it's a really good one to practice and to try and get your head round. What is a report and what do we need to include in them? So simply put, a report then is a document that presents information in an organised format for a specific audience and purpose. Although summaries of reports may be delivered already, complete reports are almost always written in the form of written documents. OK, so these are really good things to practice in terms of actually developing your skills for um, the workplace, for example. So if you do have to write a report, these are the kind of things that will help build those kind of skills for the workplace. What do you need to include in them? 
So now what we need to think about is what kind of organisational features or presentational features do you need to include in the layout of your report. So firstly then, a report must discuss the positives and negatives of the focus of the writing. Headlines and subheadings are needed to organise ideas effectively. And finally, an effective introduction that expresses the purpose of the report. And for me, this is the most important one because it really helps there to get across um, the purpose and the idea of actually physically putting pen to paper. So your introduction here for a report is going to sound a little bit different from that of um, an article or a letter or anything like that. So that one is going to be probably the trickiest thing to think about when you do your own response. Look at the example and attempt the challenges that follow. So here we have a typical example of a report. So this is one that you could use when you come to write your own version in a moment. So first of all, we have a headline. So very, very clearly stating what the purpose of the report is about. So shopping centre report, the Trafford Centre. So clearly stating that is what I'm going to be writing about. This report has been produced with the aim to understand the positive and negative aspects of the local shopping centre. Its aim is to understand how the centre can be improved to better suit the needs of the wider community. The shopping area. So if you think about actually what we're producing, we we're producing a report in this case. So we're very clearly we've used a headline at the start there and now we're using a subheading as well to help organise our ideas. Firstly, the Trafford Centre is situated in a good location that makes access easy for many people. When it comes to parking, however, many people feel that it is in desperate need of improvement. 80% of shoppers feel stressed and anxious at the high cost they are forced to pay just to use the designated parking facility for the shops. The parking unit is expensive, overcrowded and in desperate need of renovations. So you can see there that the report is actually very, very detailed in terms of one of the things that we actually want to improve. Our introduction is very clearly stating what it is that the report aims to do and what it is we're going to be writing about. If you actually look at this in a bit more detail as well, you can see that we've started to use a few DeForest techniques in order to get some of our messages across. So you can see it here, we've got a statistic where we say 80% of shoppers feel stressed. Okay, so 80%. It's always a good idea to go quite high level in terms of the um, statistics that you try to use because the higher the level, the more convincing it's going to seem. We also have words that convey a sense of emotive language here with words like stress and anxious and things like that that definitely make us feel that this is an important issue. So when you are producing yours, think very carefully about the kind of techniques that you can use to get your message across and how you can actually use the sophisticated techniques and vocabulary to help convey the best possible message to your readership. Writing challenge. Apply your knowledge to the challenges above. So here we're going to have three different challenges for you to attempt. So it's a real good thing for you to have a go at and practice by yourself. So the first one, the challenge, attempt the writing question and follow the conventions of a report. Now, when we say conventions, what we mean by that is that you make sure that you're using a headline and subheadings and also that you write in paragraphs with a clear focus in each one. The next one, then the super challenge. Use four or more language techniques to make your writing engaging. So think about the DeForest techniques that we've covered in previous videos, or even the more advanced forms of language that you could use as well to help make your writing seem really engaging. And the final one, download the rest of the assessment paper from the link that's gonna be provided in the description. So it's gonna be exactly the same in terms of actually the writing assessment, but the reading assessment is going to provide a few different questions and other sources as well. So if you are thinking about doing both your reading and your writing assessment, either be it for level one or level two, it really is a good idea to check it out and have a look. If you need any additional help or support, the new videos will be added to our channel every single week. Alternatively, you can leave us a comment below, um, like and subscribe, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. This video was actually made because someone left a comment asking for some additional support on exam technique. So that's what we were thinking about when we created this video. If you still can't find anything on our channel, 
please do check out our partner channel Bookworm Teaching for more lessons and guidance on all things English. Thanks ever so much for watching guys and if you do need any help please don't hesitate to get in touch. Bye.